We welcome you to today's online service. Let us worship God. God is spirit. Those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. Let us pray. Gracious God, who through your Son made the weak and the rejected strong and whole, we praise you. Look mercifully on all the cult children who are rejected and marginalized and give them courage and new hope. Help us to receive the girl child as a full member of the community and restore all the honor and respect they deserve. May the talents and potentials you have endowed them fl flower forth to become essential resources in the community. Help us, Lord, that we may together be liberated and equipped to use our mutual strengths and weaknesses, gifts and talents, opportunities and limitations to contribute to the welfare of the whole world. Through Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forevermore. Amen. To the glory of God and to begin our worship, let us sing the hymn which is screamed. Let us pray together as is screened. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We shall now hear the Bible readings. மனைவிக்கு பணிவிடை செய்து கொண்டிருந்தான் 
அவன் தன் ஆட்சியாரை பார்த்து என் ஆண்டவன் சமாரியாவில் இருக்கிற தீர்க்கதரிசியின் இடத்தில் போவாரானால் நலமாயிருக்கும் அவர் இவருடைய குஷ்டலோகத்தை நீக்கி விடுவார் என்றார் அப்பொழுது அவன் போய் இஸ்ரேல் தேசத்து பெண் இன்ன இன்ன பிரகாரமாக சொல்லுகிறாள் என்று தன் ஆண்டவனிடத்தில் அறிவித்தான் அப்பொழுது சீரியாவின் ராஜா நல்லது போகலாம் இஸ்ரவேலின் ராஜாவுக்கு நிருபம் தருகிறேன் என்றான் அப்படியே அவன் தன் கையிலே பத்து தாளந்து வெள்ளியையும் ஆறாயிரம் சேக்கல் நிறை பொண்ணையும் பத்து மாற்று வஸ்திரங்களையும் எடுத்து கொண்டு போய் பாடம் முடிந்தது கிறிஸ்துவே உனக்கு மகிமை உண்டாவதாக Today's Bible reading is taken from Mark chapter 5 verses 21 to 24. Mark chapter 5 verses 21 to 24. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him and he was by the sea. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue named Jairus came and when he saw him fell at his feet and begged him repeatedly My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. So he went with him. And a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Here ends the reading from the New Testament. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Good morning everybody and a very warm welcome to the Sunday service, uh, Sunday worship of uh, Bishop Heber Chapel, uh, which we had been enjoying in the last uh, several months uh, during this pandemic. And today, as uh, we have come together to worship the Lord, the theme that is given to us for our meditation is the girl child. And uh, to begin with, let me uh, take us to a scene that very many of us are familiar as we visit uh, clinics or hospitals in our country today. When we go to any medical facility in India where there is a provision of an ultrasound scan you will find a statutory note or a warning that is prominently displayed in all such facilities and uh, the I don't think such a display is present in any other country in the world other than India I don't think it is present anywhere else the display says like this determination of the sex of the fetus is pun- a punishable offense determination of the fetus sex of the fetus is not done here uh, i believe most of us are aware of the reason for this display in all centers where prenatal ultrasound scan is done we don't the, the authorities the government do not want us to know whether we have a female child growing in the womb of the mother because the fear is that if it's a female child the tendency is for many parents to get rid of the child and not to have the child born this is something that portrays points to the bias that is deeply prevalent in the indian society against a girl child is a girl child born into our family of any kind of a secondary value are they of less value are they not equally precious as the male child that is in our families and in our societies in the two passages that were read to us today we find the stories of two little children uh, or girls who were in situations that were beyond human uh, capabilities to come over and very painful and difficult situation and one girl uh, the story of one girl is that she was taken as a captive and a slave from israel into a foreign country the other one was uh, very sick and she was declared to be dead but jesus did care for her and bring her back to life we will look at these passages and see what god has to teach us today about the girl child in our family in our church and in our society First of all I want to look at the value of the girl child. You know I begin I began by talking about the uh, unwillingness of people parents to have a girl child. Now uh, are they of less value? The first point that I want to discuss with you today is the value of the girl child. Are they valuable? Our society has taught us that when a girl child is born into the family the value of the child is less than that of a male child 
a girl child's value is less than the male child. There could be many reasons why many societies have considered a girl child of less value or less desirable than a male child. We will not attempt to get into those sociological discussions today, but we will see uh, what the scripture has to teach us about the girl child and what God expects from us. In the story of the synagogue leader, uh, in the second lesson that was read to us, the synagogue leader was Jairus. We find that Jairus comes and falls at the feet of Jesus. Falls at the feet of Jesus, that's how it is written. And pleads with him from his heart and says, My little daughter is dying. Please come and lay your hands on her that she will be healed and live. This is written in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5, verse 23. Matthew 5, 23. Jairus has placed a high value on his daughter and that made him fall at the feet of Jesus for his precious daughter. You know, he fell at the feet of Jesus because his child was so precious to him. We also see that Jesus himself gave utmost importance to that plea by Jairus and goes to his house and raises the daughter from the dead. Uh, in the creation story in Genesis chapter 2 verse 23, when uh, Eve is created uh, out of the rib of Adam and brought to Adam, Adam describes his wife like this, Genesis 2, 23. He says, now she is taken out of man and she is my, the bone of my bones and the flesh of my flesh. She is myself. She is not different. She and I are the same bone and the same flesh, so same value. This teaching is also found elsewhere in the scripture, in the New Testament and in many places. In other words, this will teach us that man and woman are equal in creation. And the, way, the very nature of the creation and procreation teaches that man and woman are of equal value and belong to each other biologically as well as emotionally and spiritually. The value and importance of the girl child is equal to that of the male child in the sight of God. We should not attempt to minimize the value of the girl to whom God has given great value. God has given great value. We should not under, undermine the value of the girl child. Sometimes we tend to minimize the value of the girl child based on our arithmetic of money or finance. Now we have our calculation of money and then we value whether the girl child is uh, of worth or not. We may think that the man brings in money and the wife spends it. You know, these are all common phrases and discussions that we hear. So a man thinks that I bring the money, that I have the right to decide and I have the right to rule, I have right over everything. And uh, But we forget that the woman is a great manager of home, which is a very, very important work. As I'm a manager in a company who manages a company, where he makes others work for him, but he gets a higher salary. If we go by that logic, the mother is certainly sometimes very, very more, much more important than the man who brings in money because she manages the, the, the home. I personally want to say that I have two daughters. When my second daughter was born in a Delhi hospital and early morning when I came home, from the hospital, my neighbors all came running to get the news and they all asked me one question, plus or minus, plus or minus. I was, you know, taken aback. I didn't understand what they are asking. They asked the question, plus or minus, sir, plus or minus. I did not understand the question first. Then they explained to me, because the boy brings money in, boy is plus, the girl takes money away from home, she is minus. So this is the way they understood it. So if it's a boy, it is plus. If it's a girl, it is a minus. Undervaluing our girl child. So we value the boy child over the girl child, forgetting that in God's creation, both male and female are of equal value and they are of one value. Second thing that I want to bring to your attention this morning is the status of the girl child. First, we talked about the value of the girl child. Secondly, I want to discuss about the status of the girl child. What kind of a status and a role the girl child has in our families, 
in our churches and in our society. What is the status of the girl in our home? What is the status of the girl in our church? And what is the status of the girl in our society? The very fact that we need to ask this question reveals the deep-rooted prejudice in our society, in our community against the girl child that is very strongly prevalent. That's why we are having a topic like this. Otherwise they are equal. What status has the girl child in our home? Is a question we need to very clearly ask. The value and status of the girl child begins and is taught in our own homes. It begins in our homes. The value and the status of the girl child. We parents uh, give those values. I have often heard parents, especially mothers with, uh, with girl children or with daughters, often reminding their daughters like this. As a pastor, I have heard it many times from different homes. The mother tells the daughter something she does every time she will remind. Remember, don't forget that you are a girl. Remember that you are a girl. Don't forget that you are a girl. The girl is reminded that she has limitations. She is of less value than the male. When they sit with other men in the family at home or when they take leadership in any activity or when they take their share of things available at home, this chorus is repeated. Remember, you are a girl. There is a deep-rooted indoctrination that we impart to our daughters that they are born with lower status and a lower role in the society. This in effect conditions them to a very limited use of the talents and gifts that God has endowed them with. The God has endowed them with great gifts and talents but they will tell them, you are a girl, don't use all of that. Suppressing or not using a talent or a gift given by God is tantamount to going against the plan and the purpose of God in the creation of mankind. When God has given them gifts and we tell them don't use it, we are working against God, I believe. It is high time that we who are children of God acknowledge and facilitate the use of the God-given talents in our daughters so that they will have a role in honoring God with their life and with their talents. The girl child cannot be deprived of leadership and decision-making dimensions of our life together, whether in the family, in the church, or in the society. Third thing that I want to talk to you today is the witness of the girl child. You know, there are many, many more things that you can see, but from these stories that you can, you know, these are the things that uh, I could uh, deduce for our discussion today. Witness of the girl child. We looked at the value of the girl child and uh, we also <coughs> saw the status of the girl child. Now we will see the witness of the girl child. Another beautiful thing that we see about the girl child in the scripture is their powerful witness and trust in the Lord. Especially in the first story that we read from 2 Kings chapter 5. The, the girl child is endowed with a strong character of resilience and adaptability with a very strong faith and trust in the Lord. In the story of the girl from Israel who was captured and was made a servant in the house of the Aramean commander Naaman, we can see this powerful witness of this little girl for her God and her strong faith in the Lord. We may recollect where she came from. I hope uh, most of us will know this. She came from Israel. Israel is a northern kingdom. You know, when Israel was divided, the whole Israel, the unified Israel was divided into two. And the northern kingdom was separated from Judah and they did not have a, a place for worship. And this girl comes from the northern kingdom, which is actually where, uh, you know, in the gospel according to John and all, we read about the Samaritans. From the same place she came from. And the king of Israel, of the place where she lived, he made a calf as an idol and asked the people to come and worship that. Because he didn't want them to go back to Jerusalem and be united back with the two tribes of Judah and Benjamin. So this is what uh, uh, the, the king did. But the you know, prophet Elijah, sorry, Elisha used to come and stay in Israel also occasionally, very often. This little girl was taken as a captive from that place 
where the king was wandering away from God, but she was still staying with the Lord. She was not distracted by any of those things that was happening around. We can very well assume that she had parents with strong faith in the Lord, Yahweh, and taught her about their God. So it was deep rooted in her heart. She is now in a very painful situation, being captured by the enemies, taken away from her parents and from family members, and now servant of a foreign commander and they are at their home. But we see the beautiful thing about her in the first reading that we read. We see her faith and trust in the Lord was not shaken by any of the things happening around. Not only so, she was not afraid to witness to her captors about the Lord that she knew. She was not afraid to tell them about the God of Israel. We can see the confidence in her testimony. And this is what she says in 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 3. If only my master would see the prophet who is in Samaria, he would come, uh, he would cure him of his lep leprosy. If only my master, would, that is Naaman, would see the prophet who is in Samaria and he would cure him of his leprosy. We can see that her testimony resulted in Naaman finally confessing like this. I am quoting from the scripture, uh, 2 Kings chapter 5 verse 15. And it says, this is what Naaman says after he was healed of his leprosy. All following the testimony of this little girl. And he says, now I know, now I know that there is no God in all the world except in Israel. Now I know that there is no God in all the world except in Israel. He further makes his comment, commitment also. He says uh, to Elisha, Your servant will never again make burnt offerings and sacrifices to any other God but the Lord of Israel, the Lord Yahweh. I will not make any burnt offerings or sacrifices to any other God. I know that there is a God in Israel. All of that was a result of the powerful witness and testimony of this little girl who trusted in the Lord. Is a girl child of value? Is a girl child a powerful witness? Yes. This little unnamed girl in captivity won a greater battle than all the other kings and commanders of Israel because she witnessed in such a powerful way that the enemy commander surrendered his life to God. This is a witness of this little girl child. Have we ever thought that our girl children are not capable of bearing witness to the Lord Jesus Christ? They may be sometimes much more powerful than all of us. If God has given, the resili given them the resilience and strong faith and sense of responsibility, why do we prevent uh, them from witnessing to the Lord in a powerful way? Finally, I want to conclude with these words. Friends, we have seen that the girl child who is often looked down or underestimated by our families, society and church, are equipped, endowed by God to do great things for the Lord. They are very, very precious in God's sight. They are precious in the sight of God and also precious in the plan of God for mankind. We should stop and discourage others from undervaluing our daughters. We should rather encourage others and we should ourselves start valuing our daughters higher. They are so precious to us. They are equal to the men in God's plan and God's creation plan. We should begin to allow them to, or entrust them with responsibilities that are equipped by, that they are equipped by God. God has given them talents. We should encourage them to use those talents. We should learn from the powerful witness that we find in many women who became very powerful witness to the Lord uh, and join with them in being witnesses to the Lord. We are in you know, our Christian church history is full of such women. Amy Carmichael and many, many others. You know, we know many such stories. You now, these women were such powerful witness to the Lord in the most difficult situations. And then we should learn from those lessons and see that our daughters are also powerful witness to the Lord. If this slave girl, little slave girl in the story could make such an impact in two kingdoms, Aram and uh, Israel, 
how much more our girl child can do for the Lord. May the Lord help us that we will see the hand of God in our daughters and put them in the hands of God so that they will make a difference to the world we live and lead many to the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. Amen. Let us profess our faith through the Apostles Creed as screened. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us sing the closing hymn as a screened. During the singing of the hymn, the offer tree will be received. Let us look to God in prayer. Loving God, we thank you for the Sunday for girl children. We thank you for the young girls that you had given in this world. Lord, when we hear the atrocities and the shame which are committed upon girl children in our country. We pray, O oh God, that the such attitudes are transformed to let our girl children live and grow well. Lord, we pray that you will grant our girl children to be in dignity and to be treated with love and affection. We pray, O oh God, that the girl children may walk courageously and without fear in all walks of life. At this time of pandemic, Lord, we pray that you will destroy the fatal virus completely from our country as well as the countries in the world. Safeguard us, our families, elders and children. Lord, we pray to safeguard our college community, our beloved students, professors, 
non teaching support and admin staff and their families we remember the sick the suffering the poor the widows the jobless the bereaved and all who require god's help grant them your help and strengthen them we pray for all those who are celebrating their birthdays wedding anniversaries and special days grant them your blessings and grace upon them we thank you for the offer tree which we have received bless the offer tree that it is used for the extension of your kingdom bless those who had offered the offer tree bless their efforts their families and all who are related with them keep them safe in your arms and lord we pray that you will be with them at all times we thank you for your loving presence the brooding of the holy spirit upon us throughout this service lord we offer all our thanks and gratitude to you and we pray all of this in and through the precious name of our lord and savior jesus christ amen may the grace of our lord and savior jesus christ the love of god the father and the fellowship of the holy spirit rest and abide with all of us this day and for evermore